sustainable leaders of the future, a webinar on sustainability, protecting the environment, and having fun in nature. We are students from the Sustainable Aurelia Youth Council, and we are very excited to help educate, energize, and mobilize the young people in Aurelia to get stuff done. We're going to talk about sustainability and what it means for our organization. and learning about nature. Then we'll be showing you what you can do to make a difference. So let's introduce ourselves. My name is Emily and I am a student at Lakehead University and I am one of the co-presidents of the Youth Council. My name is Zach and I'm also co-president of the Youth Council. I'm a student at Twin Lakes. My name is Amelia and I'm new to the Youth Council. I'm also a student at Twin Lakes. Along with us, you will also get to meet some other members of the Youth Council during this presentation. You might be asking yourself, what is uh, Sustainable Aurelia Youth Council? Or maybe you have already forgotten that name already. Either way, let me tell you about our organization. Sustainable Aurelia is a nonprofit organization that was implemented by the mayor of Aurelia to be a go-to task force on sustainability. The Youth Council is a part of that organization. We are a group of students from local high, high schools who uh, care about the environment and want to make a difference. Our goal is to connect students from schools across Aurelia's so that we are able to get more done. When schools help each other, they can learn and make improvements that they may not have thought of before. It also allows us to run big projects across Aurelia like this, a webinar. We have worked hard to make this happen, and we hope you enjoy our presentation as much as we enjoyed making it. So this format is new to us all, so we're hoping that everything will go smoothly with uh, connection and quality. Uh, for those of you not watching it live, uh, you will still have the same technical difficulties uh, since this is a recording. Um, but if you are watching it live, if there are any technical difficulties, uh, please let us know in the chat so that uh, we can uh, make sure to fix them however we can. Um, also, if there are any uh, questions during the presentation, uh, if you're watching live, you can ask in the chat, or if you're watching as a video, you can put it in the YouTube comments or send us an email about that. Uh, we will try to answer any questions that you guys have. So without further ado, here's Emily and Amelia with their presentation on what is sustainable. Does anyone know what the word sustainable means? Oh my goodness, that is such a good question. Oh what does sustainability mean? Well, Amelia, sustainability is the ability to maintain something over a period of time. Wow, so like when I'm doing a 20 minute CrossFit workout, which is a pretty long workout, I don't wanna spend all my energy on the first five minutes or else I'll be tired and slow at the end. So I'd want to pace myself for the entire 20 minutes. Exactly, so this also goes for sustainable development, which is development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future of future generations to meet their own needs. But Emily, how many future generations? What will their needs be? Those are amazing questions, Amelia. The answer is we do not know. And that is why we need sustainable development. Now, sustainable development is not just environmental, but we also need to look at the economic and social parts in sustainable development. This is because the economy is really important to our nation, our province, and to our community. And ensuring that human needs can be met in perpetuity is also important to sustainable development. Exactly. We need to develop systems of governance that res respects humans' rights, social equality, and justice because we need to empower and include everybody. Right on, Amelia. Sustainable development is so much more than just environmental initiatives, even though environmental initiatives are very important, but it also calls for interdisciplinary work. We must have an acceptable balance between economic development and environmental protection. The United Nation has come up with 17 sustainable development goals that includes solutions to best manage competing interests of environmental protection, social obligation, and economic prosperity which many students at Twin Lakes have learned about, including ourselves. And I believe our, 
other students should learn about that. I totally agree. The 17 SDGs are to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. They address the global challenges we face today, including poverty, inequality, climate change, environmental degradation, peace, and justice. We are tomorrow's leaders. We are the future. We have the ability to change the world as youth, but we need your help. We encourage you guys to be the next generation to step up and be leaders throughout our community. The future depends on us youth to make change for a better tomorrow. We have an amazing webinar lined up for you guys. You're going to be hearing from some fantastic student leaders from across Aurelia. They have worked so hard to make this webinar, and Amelia and I specifically, uh, are so par proud to be a part of this project. We have made videos and activities for you guys, and I'm so excited to share because the Youth Council worked so hard on them. If joining our council sounds of interest to you, stay tuned to the end, and we will tell you more about the Sustainable Aurelia Youth Council. We will now pass it off to Zach. All right. So we hope that you have enjoyed learning about sustainability. And we now wanna show you more about nature with some educational videos we have prepared. So this first video is going to show you about exploring nature. Most people know that we should protect the environment, but I think it's important to see and learn about what it is that we are protecting. Nature is pretty amazing uh, and experiencing it can be a lot of fun. Here in Aurelia, uh, nature is everywhere. We're situated on two beautiful lakes on the east and several different forests on the west. These are habitats for so many diverse species of animals and plants. Today we are at Scotts Valley, which is the largest city park and likely most significant ecological asset here in Aurelia. It is a diverse representation of habitats with forests, wetlands, sand and gravel, and a river all the way through it. We're going to talk about some of these habitats as well as the plants that you will find here in Aurelia. Trees may seem boring because they're a part of everyday life, but they're crazy feats of nature. Imagine trying to suck water up a straw that is 25 meters tall. Not only would it be difficult, but it would be scientifically impossible. We, even with a perfect suction, like in outer space, the height limit for a straw on Earth is 10 meters. Yet trees can grow to be over 100 meters tall and still get water up at the top of their leaves. How? Well, trees bend the laws of physics and create negative pressures to suck water all the way up way higher than otherwise thought possible. Another fun fact is that trees get their mass almost entirely from air. Because a lot of people think that they might get it from the dirt, but if you look at the dirt around the base of a tree, it doesn't disappear as the tree grows. So all of its mass comes from carbon dioxide in the air. And that's actually why trees are so important for climate change, because they take this carbon dioxide use the carbon and give us back the oxygen which we can breathe. But this relationship doesn't just go one way. When we breathe in oxygen, we replace that oxygen with carbon dioxide, which then the trees breathe in. And it goes back and forth between the two of us. This is really the truest form of sustainability because we both help each other. And we're really just distant cousins of trees. We and trees are all made out of the same stuff, mostly carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen.
So, what types of trees exist in the Aurelia area? There are many different types of trees in the Aurelia area, both coniferous and deciduous. Some coniferous trees are spruce, fir, pine, cedar, and hemlock. And some deciduous trees are oak, maple, birch, and ash. One of the most iconic and popular trees of Canada is the maple tree. And something that makes it super easy to identify is, uh, the, is due to the leaves, as it is the same leaf as the one on the Canada flag. Uh, a fun fact about maple trees is that is also where we get all of our maple syrup from. This is the pine tree. Pine trees can be easily identified by the pine cones that drop from it, and also these pine needles that usually come in about groups of two or five. This is an ash tree, and a way we can identify an ash tree is due to their leaves. They are a simple structure, so round with a small pointed tip configuration. Alright, so this is a birch tree, and birch trees are very easy to identify as they have a white bark that sort of peels off. It's sort of a papery material. This is the juniper tree. The juniper tree can be easily identified by the ballpoint ends on the leaves that spread out in interesting patterns from the branch. An interesting fact about the juniper tree is when you crush these leaves, you get a lemon or an apple smell. This is a hemlock tree, and a way we can identify these is due to the long, flat needles, and something that really gives it away is due to the white coloring on the uh, bottom of the needles. Here we have a fir, and a fir is very similar to a hemlock, as it sort of has the flat needles uh, and tube shapes at the end of the stems. However, unlike the hemlock, there is no white on the bottom of the leaf. This is a spruce tree. You can tell that it's a spruce tree because the needles surround the branch and may form a cylinder. The needles are very pokey. Alright, so this is the cedar tree. A way we can identify the cedar tree is due to their unique needles. Unlike other coniferous trees, the needles are a bit wider, longer, and a bit flatter. So as you can see, there are many different types of uh, trees in Scouts Valley and the Aurelia area in general. If you wish to build on this uh, knowledge of vegetation in the Aurelia area, you can also try identifying plants. As you can see, even in this background alone, there are many different types of plants available to identify. One thing that makes nature and the environment so unique are the countless opportunities for creativity and creation that are available. While you are outside, there are tons of different objects that you can use to create new and interesting pieces of art, and you will never run out of ideas due to the endless diversity of the outdoor world. While exploring Scouts Valley, uh, we were able to come up with multiple artistic ideas, and we encourage all of you to do the same. Even just as we're walking through here, Scouts Valley, we see someone else made their own nature art saying, Happy Thanksgiving 2020. Here's another piece of nature we found at Scouts Valley, a heart made of rocks. Due to all of the fallen maple leaves on the forest floor, one of our first ideas was to recreate the Canadian flag from these leaves. Here is a time lapse of us making a Canadian flag out of some maple leaves. If there is one thing to take from this segment, it is just to go outside and explore nature. Enjoy the environment that we are so fortunate to have here in Aurelia. There are so many things to do outdoors. You can go hiking, running, biking, parkour, or even swimming, but maybe not at this time of year. There is so much to explore here and everywhere else. It seems like every time I come to Scouts Valley, I discover something new. And it's not even a square kilometer here, so go out and explore. And remember that this is what you're protecting when you're protecting the environment. All right, so if you do want to identify a tree, you can visit our website where we have built a web application that helps you identify local trees. I'll share my screen right now so you guys are able to see it. All right. 
So it asks you a couple questions. So first off, it asks you if it has leaves or needles slash scales. Let's say it has needles or scales. You click on that. And again, you follow the list, moving down, bunches, individual, yes. And we find out that's a common juniper. So that's just a simple way to uh, identify local trees. That's available on our website. All right. And that was built uh, from scratch by uh, me and some other youth council members. And so if you join the youth council, that's uh, an initiative that you can also be working on. It's, it's pretty fun. Uh, this next video is gonna show you about some of the very important pollinators in Ontario. Pollinators and pollination. What is pollination? Well, pollination is when either an insect or the wind takes pollen from one flower and transports it to another flower where that goes towards producing seed which goes towards producing new flowers for more pollination to occur in the future. Who are our pollinators? Well, they consist of bees, wasps, butterflies and moths, beetles, flies, ants, birds, and mammals such as bats. Bees are our most important pollinators by far. They pollinate one of every three bites of food that we eat. There are 400 different types of bees in Ontario, also known as species, and altogether there are 4,000 different types of bees or species in uh, North America. A species is just a single type of living thing, such as humans are a single species, as well as chickadees, kangaroos, and black widow spiders. Bees are extremely diverse animals and they range from 5 millimeters to 25 millimeters in size and consist of many different groups. We have two general groups of bees. The European honeybees and our native bees. To understand what a native bee is, we have to ask what is a non-native bee. A non-native bee is a bee that's been imported from other parts of the world, whereas a native bee is one that is originally from this area. On the left is the rusty patch bumblebee, which is an endangered species, and on the right is the European honeybee. The European honeybee is important for indicating the health of other bee species as it's much more difficult to track the health of our native bee species. Generalists versus specialists. Generalists are pollinators who are able to eat or pollinate all or a large variety of plants. These include our bumblebees and honeybees. Specialist pollinators are those who have specific plant requirements. These are most of our pollinators and include the monarch butterfly, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. Their caterpillars are only able to feed on milkweed species. Specialist insects have evolved alongside specific plants over thousands of years and rely on each other for important parts of their life cycles. Bees rely on plants as a food source, so do other pollinators, and Plants rely on bees to produce seed and future plants. Native plants are extremely important since so many of our pollinators are specialists. We must plant native plants to benefit those specialist pollinators that will only pollinate one or maybe two different kinds of plants. These are just some pictures of some of the many plants that are native to Ontario. So in order to provide pollinators with good habitat, we must first provide them with a diverse source of food throughout all stages of life. So that means lots of different kinds of plants. Secondly, we must provide them with habitat to nest and forage. That means providing water and adequate nesting sites, as well as uh, providing them close proximity between foraging sites. So you must have gardens in almost every yard in order to best benefit our pollinators.
This is an example of a pollinator garden that I put in at Aurelia Secondary School, and if you'd like to get involved or uh, are interested in bringing a pollinator garden to your school community, let us know. Thanks. final video is going to show you how to make some environmentally friendly crafts. Hello lovelies and welcome to Amelia's channel. Now today we are going to be making bird feeders out of toilet paper rolls. Who needs to throw this in the recycling bin and you can reuse it. Only 9% of stuff that gets thrown in the recycling bin gets recycled so it's a good thing to reuse. So what you're gonna need is some bird seed, some twine, I just found this in my garage, but you can find it anywhere, some peanut butter, but, and of course a toilet paper roll. What we're going to do first is we're gonna put peanut butter on a toilet paper roll. Okay guys? So if you are at school, please use seed butter because this is not allowed at school. Okay, <laughs> so you spread it on here. This is super satisfying. And like all the birds. This, Sorry? Do you like doing this? Yes, I do it all the time. Except I haven't never shared it before. I really wanted to share it, but yeah. And so, what do birds do when they get sick? They, get, they get tweetment. <laughs> That's hilarious, isn't it, you guys? Next, you're gonna roll in here. I made a big mess, so I'm not gonna use the bag to put it on here. I'm just gonna use my mess to create a bird feeder. See how it sticks to the peanut butter? Because that's what you want, guys. Next, you'll get the twine, or like string, or whatever you need, my dear children. And then you're gonna cut it, because you have to cut it like guys, or it just won't. Or that would just be funny if you didn't cut it. Almost there, don't worry. There. <laughs> that was a bit aggressive. Okay, next you're going to, okay, that's a bit weird, but it doesn't matter. The birds won't care. They only like the seed part. Okay, you're gonna tie it up and then make a little tie thing at the top. Don't tie it all the way down because then that won't make a string thing. It's little bunny ears. And then you've got your bird feeder. The birds will love you. You'll make new friends with the birds. And that, and also, you'll be reusing something that you don't need to just throw into the recycling bin. There we go, perfect. They're gonna be like, oh, thanks, Amelia. You're the best. You gave us a little stuff We love it, thank you. No problem, bird friends. I'll see you later. <laughs> Have an amazing day, you guys. Um, we really hope that you enjoyed those videos. Um, my name is Matt, and I'm going to be talking to you guys with JJ, who you'll meet in a minute, about the upcoming seven-day challenge. This challenge gives you the opportunity to show us what you've learned from this webinar and to potentially even win a prize. You'll be asked to complete daily challenges, and you can email your results to us at yc at sustainablyrelia.ca. The challenge will run from December 6th to December 12th, and you can submit your results up till December 13th. Here's what each day will entail. On day one, um, you'll be reducing plastic and reusing rather than recycling. Did you know that only 9% of plastic actually gets recycled? It's the hard truth that lots of people don't know. But don't worry, there's a better, a better way and more environmentally friendly way to deal with your recyclables. And that is called reusing. Reusing not only helps save our planet, the animals, plants, and nature, but it's also a calming and fun way to fill your day with purpose and joy. So how can we re reuse plastic? We can make different things out of the items we didn't need to recycle in the first place. For example, do we need to recycle toilet paper rolls? No, we can easily make a bird feeder out of them. To find crafts for these items, you can find them all over the internet, or you can create your own crafts. So use your imagination and create anything you'd like with those items that you never needed to throw in a recycling bin.
measuring your carbon footprint. Measuring your ecological footprint is a very effective way to determine how impactful your life and your daily habits are on the environment. There are many websites you can where you can calculate your ecological footprint. For example, we were using one called footprintcalculator.org. Um, at the beginning of the week, want you, you're going to want to use this uh, website to measure your ecological footprint by visiting it, following the guidelines, and answering each question. Once your ecological footprint is measured, analyze your results and ask your, yourself how greatly you impact the environment. Is your daily life affecting the environment? What parts of your daily routine should you adjust to accommodate the environment? Once you've considered these factors, make adjustments to your daily life. A tip for doing this is to make daily goals. This can be as simple as reducing the amount of water you waste. Throughout the week, be conscious of your ecological footprint and take action. At the end of the week, measure your ecological footprint once again and compare that to your results from the beginning of the week. Ask yourself if you've improved. Youth are often not entirely aware of how much their daily lives affect the planet, and this activity aims to change that. Challenge your family to do this activity as well. This will help you stay motivated as well as increase your impact. Some really easy ideas to consider would be turn off the lights when you leave a room, turn off the tap when you're not using it, take shorter and even colder showers, eat less meat and more fruits and vegetables, or do your best to carpool with your parents, siblings, or friends when you can. On day three, your goal is to participate in some sort of outdoor activity. Some examples of this include going for a walk, run, or a bike ride. Make sure to log any kilometers traveled outdoors today to show yourself just how much you did. By being outside, we gain a greater appreciation for the world around us. This helps rem us remember what it is we're trying to preserve and protect and motivates us to do more to help protect the environment. Carbon emissions are released when electricity is made and thus using electricity contributes to your carbon footprint. On day four, your challenge is to turn off as many elect electrical accessories as possible. There's tons of fun things you can do with this. For example, you can make it a family night. Turn off the lights, light up some candles, and play board games. You could try to make a dinner that doesn't require electricity, such as a salad, or you can try to cook over a fire. On day five, your challenge is to do an outdoor scavenger hunt. Your environment encompasses beautiful nature features that you may overlook on a daily basis. So explore your surroundings and try to find as many items in nature as you can, such as a cone from a tree, something round, an interesting rock, a flower, something fuzzy, something green, a colorful leaf, or something to recycle. Day six, make a healthy, sustainable dinner and reduce your food waste. An often overlooked factor of someone's carbon footprint is the food they eat. The food industry, specifically the meat industry, is one of the biggest contributors to greenhouse gases on this planet. Red meat is the worst for this, but cutting back on any type of meat is a great way to shrink your carbon footprint. Another way to eat sustainably is to eat local foods and to support local farmers. This can be done by shopping at farmers markets or purchasing foods at grocery stores that you know are local to Ontario. For today's challenge, cook a non-red meat or even a vegetarian dinner with your family. Try your best to use foods local to the community as well. And remember, when you shop, make sure you reuse your re make sure you use reusable shopping bags. After you've enjoyed your meal, make sure you're respectful of your food waste as well. Eat what you need, and if there's any leftovers, save them re in reusable containers for lunch the next day. Day seven. So on day seven, your challenge is a photo or art challenge. Go outside in your backyard, schoolyard, or community and find some trees which shouldn't be too hard and take a picture or draw their leaves. Use these to try and identify which tree you're looking at, and you can use our pamphlet or our website to help you figure out which tree or plant you've found. Don't worry if you didn't quite catch all of that. A summary of the important information can be found in your Sustainable Aurelia pamphlet, which you either should have now or you'll get really soon. Anyway, moving on to what you can do to help. Learning about the environment, climate change, and what we have to do to make a change is very important. However, the most important thing to do is to take action. There are many things that you can do to help improve the damage done to the environment. You don't have to make big changes to help do your part. Doing some simple things individually, in your school, or in your community can make a huge difference. We've come up with a, a list of great ideas that you can try. There are many ways you can help create a more environmentally friendly world. Um, and making changes in your daily routine can have a big impact. 
Some things you can do to help are buying locally sourced food when it is in season. The farmer's market is a great place to support local farmers and get the food that is in season. In the spring and summer, um, your family can also grow a vegetable garden. This will also cut down on the produce that you have to buy at the grocery store. It also helps the environment. Growing plants helps the environment as they take carbon dioxide from the air that harms our planet and releases oxygen so we can breathe. This also helps because if the vegetables are already at your house, they do not have to travel from a farm to the store and then to your house. Reducing your food waste and composting any organic waste is, an, is another great way to reduce your carbon footprint. You can also bike or walk uh, when the trip is short enough, as driving emits lots of air pollutants and walking and biking don't emit those same gases, which makes it a healthier way to travel. Another easy thing to do is use reusable water bottles. This reduces the amount of plastic you're using and throwing away because you're no longer using plastic single-use water bottles. There are lots of things you can do with your family as well. Try to limit buying things that with non-recyclable packaging and when it is recyclable, make sure to recycle it in the correct bin. Something to consider when purchasing is how eco-friendly the company is and try to buy from those that are more environmentally conscious. Also, instead of purchasing a new item, try finding it second at a second-hand store. This helps reduce the number of items that need to be produced instead of having to make a new item. When your family leaves the house, make sure to turn all the lights and taps off as this will help save on the energy that you use. And if you have to go somewhere and other people are going, organize a carpool. Of course, only once COVID-19 is over. These are simple ways you can personally do your part to help with preventing climate change. And there are also many other ways to get involved with the environment and take a bigger role in finding a solution. Hi, I'm Ms. Khan, and I'm a grade 12 student at Patrick Fogarty. So how you can contribute in your school community. School is a great place to create change. Your school provides yourself as well as other students with countless opportunities to contribute to your school community. Becoming involved is the first step to making a difference. As an example on how you can contribute to your school community, you can create your own eco club or green team. Forming a team is a great way to take part in something that's helping better your school community. You can also meet new people who all have the same goal as you. Here are some ideas to get your eco club started. The first step to creating your eco club is to communicate with your teachers. Having a teacher by your side is an essential way to make your club a success. They are a source of guidance and a leader who you can learn from. Advertise your club as well. Letting your peers as well as teachers know about your club is the first step to raising awareness as well as gaining more members. Some ways to do this include daily announcements to your class or over the school PA system, posters around your school, and simply talking about it to your friends. You and your club can also participate in activities. There are many fun activities that you, your eco club, and your school can participate in to ensure your school community maintains a clean and eco-friendly environment. These activities can include kitchen days, waste audits, theme days, challenges or contests, and fundraisers. Kitchen days dedicate time to cleaning up your school and surrounding community. Waste audits are sorting through garbage to find items that can be recycled. Hosting a theme day for your school is a way to raise school spirit and have everyone participate in your club's cause. Creating contests for your fellow classmates and school to participate in is one way to influence people to support your cause while also having fun. And lastly, Fundraisers allow you to raise money and put it towards an important cause, or you can use it to pursue a project with your club. If creating a club is not something you are interested in, there are many other ways to get involved. First off, joining a club is always a second option, or volunteering with them is great too. Other ways include doing your own independent projects. This could mean advertising your cause to friends and family or setting up your own posters around the school. Making sure your friends, classmates, and teachers are aware of environmental 
issues is a necessity in creating change. The more people who are informed and educated about the issues means there are more people who are willing to contribute to the cause. Contributing to your school in any way possible, whether big or small, is the first step in creating the, the difference in your school. Students and youth are the future of our generation, and therefore, your actions matter the most. So take part in helping your school community become more aware of the environmental issues around the world. Hi, my name is Grayson. I'm a grade 12 student at Twin Lakes, and so I'm going to be talking about on a community scale, so what you can do in your community. So reaching out to your community is a very beneficial way of spreading awareness. And a great way to do this is by joining us on the Sustainable Aurelia Youth Council. And to do this, you guys can check out our website for information about us and what we do. And mentioning the council to friends and family is a vital way of advertising the council and discovering new people who are interested in participating. Joining the council is not only a very good way to get your voice and ideas to be heard, but is also a way to take action on those ideas and make change in our community. So don't hesitate to become a member. And another way to become active in the community is by attending climate strike rallies. These rallies focus on the environmental issues going on around the world and the purposes to raise awareness and spread knowledge about the issues to the citizens. Participating in these rallies is a way to show the world we need to make change. They are inspiring and motivating and a great way to meet other like-minded people who care for our planet. And a final very easy way to spread awareness and create change in the community is posting on social media, advertising things like Sustainable Aurelia Youth Council, upcoming environmental rallies, and petitions to make change to do with the handling of the environment, and all of these are really easy things that people can do to help contribute. And also be sure to follow us on Instagram. Our handle is Sustainable Aurelia underscore YC. Thank you. JJ, Muscon, and Grayson for showing us what we can do to make a difference. As they said, the Sustainable Aurelia Youth Council is a great resource, and we're always looking for new members. Our goal is to strengthen youth leadership in sustainability and to build rewarding and healthy lives for us, the future citizens of Aurelia, and everyone else as well. We want sustainability to be more than a box on a checklist, but instead a lens through which everyone sees the world. It's never too early or too late to start making a difference in your community. If you want to represent your school or just participate in our events, let us know. We have a website, emails, or you can just talk to your teacher and we'll make sure that you're invited to our next meeting. You could even be a part of our next webinar. So make sure to complete our seven day challenge and send the results to yc at sustainableaurelia.ca to be entered to win a prize from Sustainable Aurelia. Make sure to use the tips we provided you with to help to protect the environment and also have fun by exploring nature and creating sustainable art. A lot of the information we went over during our presentation is also available on the pamphlet that your teachers will give to you so you can remember what you have learned. right here. Um, it contains some tree identification, some anagrams, um, it's got a coloring page, some sustainability tips, and then also a simplified version of our seven-day challenge so you don't forget anything. Um, it also has some links at the bottom of the last page to important resources. All right, so we hope that you have enjoyed our presentation and that you have learned a lot. Uh, if there are any questions from the live audience, uh, I'm going to wait for a minute or so. Um, but otherwise, you can uh, email us or ask questions in the YouTube comments if you are watching this there. Um, I'll just conclude the presentation for now and wait to see if there are any uh, questions. So if your teacher has handed out the pamphlet, uh, try doing the activities listed on it, such as the seven-day challenge, uh, and submit it to our email or our website to win a prize from Sustainable Aurelia, such as one of our reusable mugs. Um, so yeah, we hope that you enjoyed and learned a lot. I'm glad to say that there were pretty much no big technical uh, challenges, which was a bit surprising, um, but I was glad to see it. Um, everything ran pretty smoothly. Uh, we worked hard to put it together, and we are very happy with the result. So we, are, we, uh, we hope that you are uh, happy with the result as well. Uh, thank you to all the presenters, I'll just say right now. Um, we did a great job. Um, and thank you guys for uh, watching. We, uh, we did this for you guys. I would love to thank Zach for organizing this huge project. He has put so much time um, into this project. And um, it's done no, but that's fantastic. okay. All right. 
I think that will be the end of our webinar. Thank you guys for watching.